Hello and a warm welcome to all our participants. My name is Rajesh. We continue our journey with Jason and the Argonauts past the Mount of Bears. Apollonius considered that with the abandonment of Heracles, a preparatory phase had ended. However, before leaving the Propontis for good and entering the Bosphorus, which is the narrow passage to the Black Sea, or Ixion, the inhospitable sea. The heroes must undergo four trials. The first takes place in the southern part of Bithynia, which borders the Propontis, then occupied the Bibrasis. The name Bithynia evokes the evolution of the inner being in the incarnation. The Argonauts arrived in the country of Bibrice, Bibricus, where the arrogant king Amicus, son of Poseidon, ruled. He imposed an unworthy law on foreigners. No one was to leave the country until they had fought him in a fist fight. He had thus killed many travelers. Pollux immediately volunteered to fight him. Castor and Talus helped, to helped him to prepare for the fight. Pollux put down his cloak of delicate fabric, and the king of the Bibracus untied at the same time his own cloth of black color and coarse fabric. The fight was a very violent affair. Pollux could not avoid a wound to the shoulder but he killed Amicus with a blow above the ear. There followed a general fight in which many Bibricuses were killed. Claude, tell us what the King Amicus represents. King Amicus is, me, is meaning, the name is meaning the Roaring One. And his country of Bebriques is a one of stupidity. The seeker is therefore confronted with a part of himself that tries to force its way through the stages, solely through his, egoistic, his egoistical personal will. To this, he must oppose the spiritual warrior force the one in him that is most skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and without weapon, Pollux, one of the Dioscuri, which means the sons of God. Of course, he must also prepare the ground by opening his consciousness to rectitude and sincerity, represented by Castor, and by endurance, symbolized by Talaos. As Satprem says, those challenges which cannot be solved in inner consciousness are offered to us as confrontations and hurdles in life. Throughout Jason's quest, most seekers probably can't do without these outside experiences. Claude, please explain how this relates to asceticism, especially in the Indian history and the denial of enjoyment. Many paths advocate excessive asceticism and under the pretext of wearing down the resistance of the ego, only reinforce it with underhand gratification. This error is based on the naive assumption that false asceticism can accelerate progress and attract the benevolence of the divine. These deviations may involve mortification as well as more subtle forms in which the seeker imposes undue constraints on the body, the emotions, or the mind. Let us remember that the vital in us is indeed nourished as much by suffering as by enjoyment. 
and it is the vital subconscious that expresses itself here because Amicus is the son of Poseidon with his desire for sensations and power. The story also highlights the beginner's tendency to measure himself against standards that are supposed to regulate the spiritual journey, or those who want to be the most deserving in the eyes of the master. The attitudes challenged here are the result of a vital ego that is, is too demanding and too interested in the drama and excitement that the mind endorses under the guise of virtue, courage, or spiritual progress. At this stage of the path, the seeker must eliminate any attraction to paths that only feed his or her self-contemplation and self-importance. Sincerity is the essential tool, for it is a question of dropping the mask and seizing all posturing, all imitative approaches, as, a, as well as abandoning all pretense of advancing by one's own strength. Among the Bebrikes killed are Mimas, the, which is the one who is the pantomime actor, and Itimoneus, the one who rises alone. The way out of this spiritual trap is not frontal opposition, by, but discernment, subtlety and intelligence, all in a gentle way. For the demands placed on the seeker, but chosen by him, are based on ignorance of the true path, ignorance which leads to a certain stupidity. This ignorance is represented by Amicus' cloak, which is black and made of coarse material, while Pollux is the opposite. In the boxing match, Pollux gets injured in the shoulder. Claude, tell us what is the significance of the shoulder injury. And also, please share with us your personal experience. In the symbolic description of the human body, the shoulder, or more precisely the clavicle, represents the door of the god. The wound received by Pollux at this point shows that the seeker wanted to force his way into the realms of the spirit. In my own journey, I was attracted by a very rough Japanese martial art teacher. This teacher this young teacher was rather ignorant of the true of the true spiritual journey. I was already 35 and wanted to be better than the 20 year old kids in the class. I broke my collarbone in an exercise imposed by the teacher and enthusiastically taken on by me, which was far beyond my ability. Let's uh, read the next part of the story. At dawn, the Argonauts set sail again and entered the Bosphorus. There, a wave as high as a mountain and rising above the clouds appeared before the ship. No one could have imagined that the heroes would escape death. But in the face of the skill of the navigator Typhus, the wave subsided on its own and the danger receded. Before entering the Black Sea, the seeker must pass a second test of his ability to cope with events calmly. The seeker seems to be in serious danger of a sudden event of unusual magnitude. However, according to the story, it does not seem too difficult to avoid if the seeker conducts himself skillfully. This symbolic wave, specific to each seeker, is located at the entrance of the Bosphorus, 
the, which means the passage of the co cow, which just leads to the experience of light, the cow being since Vedic times a symbol of the manifestation of the flash, flashes of truth or illuminations. You had another personal experience, one that you see as your Bosphorus moment. Please share with us that experience. At that time in my life, I was attending a me medical initiation course, which was punctuated by seminars in Brittany, a few hours drive from my main residence. During one of these weekends, while I was taking notes during a lecture, I had the vision of a possible accident, my car going straight into a wall. No, I had my eyes open and I was writing. It was just ordinary life. Quite shaken, because I had never had such a powerful premonition, I warned my passengers because we had to drive back to Paris the next day. Two of them preferred to take another car, and so I took the road only with my partner. The car was completely new because I had bought it two or three months before. It was supposed to be in perfect condition. But I moderated my speed a lot, not exceeding 70 miles per hour. 70 kilometers. Se yeah, <laughs> 70 kilometers per hour. After about 50 kilometers on the, motor, on the highway, the steering wheel started to shake violently. I slowed down immediately and stopped as soon as I could. One of the front tires was burning and its, cr and its cripe iron frame was sticking out through the rubber. At high speed, the explosion of this type will most likely have caused a serious accident. I changed the wheel and set off again at the maximum permitted speed. Perhaps the pilot skill at that moment was simply paying attention to the sign and being calm with the necessary caution. Thank you and see you in the next class.